Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, Getting to Know Eclipse Part 12, Basic User Management, I'm going to show you how you can create and handle all of your users in Eclipse. User file INIs in Eclipse are the files that store your settings. There are two primary ways to create users in Eclipse. First is create new user, and the second is save settings. Both of these processes offer advantages and disadvantages depending on what you're after. Create new user is like starting with a blank slate. You'll have no dictionary block files, settings, or other jobs when you do create new user. When you do save settings, this allows you to create a copy of an existing user. Once you have this copy of an existing user, you can make any changes that you need to. However, the foundation of that user will be the same as the user it was copied from. So it will use the same jobs folder, dictionaries, block files, and folder structure by default. And of course, all of these settings can be changed once a user is created with either methodology. Which method you choose may depend on the type of work that you do, or you may find that for some instances, one method works better for you than the other. No matter which method you use to create a user, you can always ensure that you get what you need out of that user. Currently in my Eclipse, if I go to my user settings, my username is Ashley Van Dyke and my user file is just Ashley. My user file is the INI file that I'm using when I'm in Eclipse. The username is what gets put at the top of Eclipse for reference. You can change the username at any time. However, the user file is the name of the actual file that's being utilized by Eclipse when it's open. And so the name of this can't be changed while Eclipse is opened. Currently, if I go to Load Settings, I only have Ashley.ini. And you see like it says Ashley in user file, it says Ashley.ini here. The name of the INI file that you currently have loaded is always going to be represented in the user file field. And again, the username field is just a label for the top of Eclipse, and that information will also go into file information in the file manager. If I open up the corresponding Windows location, under Documents, Eclipse, you see that here I have my Ashley INI file, which again corresponds to ashley.ini and user file Ashley. And I also have an Ashley folder. Within this folder are all of my work files as well as my block files. I'm going to close out of Windows File Explorer and return to Eclipse. As I said previously, there are two ways to create new INI files in Eclipse. Both of these methods require going to your user settings. The first method is to use the create new user function. You can use the create new user button here or go to load settings and choose create new user and press OK. Either way is fine. I'm going to choose create new user and you'll see that Eclipse warns me that if I create a new user this way, a whole new user profile is going to be created and confirms that this is what I want to do. And again, this is because an entirely new jobs folder, main dictionary, and settings profile is going to be created all with default settings. When using create new user, the user that results bears no resemblance to the user that I am already in and have customized. In this instance, this is what I want to do, so I'm going to click yes, and Eclipse will ask me for the full name of the new user. For this user, I'm going to be scoping work for another reporter. So I'm going to name this user after that reporter. I'll choose next. And I can choose any short name that I'd like from the list, or I can choose I will provide a short name and click next. I'm going to call this Jane Doe, all one word. And I'll click finish. Now you see that Eclipse has taken me to a new user. And where it says username, it says Jane Doe. And that's also reflected at the top of Eclipse where it says Jane Doe. And the user file is Jane Doe. If I return to Windows File Explorer, you see that now I have a Jane Doe.ini 
as well as a Jane Doe folder for my jobs in this user. If I open the Jane Doe folder, all that are currently available is a dictionary and spelling files. All of these files will be blank. If I go to Eclipse and open the Jane Doe dictionary, you see that there are no entries. If I open my job list, there are no jobs and there is no block folder and no block files associated with this user. Since I chose create new user, this user is a totally blank slate. Since I'm scoping work for another reporter, this is exactly what I want. I can save that reporter's dictionary into this user, and I can save her work into this user and work on it, keeping it separate from my own normal work. Once this new blank user has been set up, although it does have default settings, this of course can all be changed. I can click on the dictionaries button, and I can change my main dictionary to look at any other dictionary on my computer. I can click the advanced button and I can change my jobs or blocks pathing to look anywhere that I may have existing files that I wish to use in this new user. Or if I wish to, I can leave everything default. I can import settings if I have existing settings I wish to use for this new user. Or I can go into all of the user settings tabs and make any changes that I require for this new user. Any settings that I make are going to be saved in the Jane Doe user and won't be applied to any of my other work. For this particular user, I want everything to be separate. I want to be able to load someone else's dictionary and keep someone else's work separate from mine, and so this is what I want. However, there may be instances where what you actually need are just slightly different settings, such as different footers, different numbers of lines per page, or just different margins. This may be necessary if you do work for many different clients, such as captioners who caption to multiple television stations, or freelance depot takers who may do depositions for various different firms with different document requirements, but who wish to use the same basic settings otherwise. When you're doing this kind of work, it may be advantageous to use the save settings method to create a new user instead of the create new user function. If you use create new user, you start out with a blank user that has none of your personalized settings. However, if I choose load settings, go back to my regular Ashley user. This time, I can choose save settings, and the save settings button has two primary functions. The first is to actually save any settings changes I've made. If I make any changes to my settings, I can come here and hit save settings, and then simply leave the file name the same as it already is and press OK to update my current user INI, which is ashley.ini. However, I can also click Save Settings and type in a different name, such as the call signal for a local television station that I want to caption to. I'll press OK. And now, although I have a new user file.ini called wptv.ini, if I return to my Eclipse folder, you see that I have ashley.ini and janedoe.ini, and I have an Ashley folder and a Jane Doe folder. However, for my WPTV INI, I do not have a corresponding folder because it's using the Ashley folder since I clicked Save Settings instead of Create New User. In my WPTV user file, if I click Advanced, you see that my Jobs folder is pointing at my Ashley folder in the Eclipse folder. This is a copy of my Ashley INI file. At this point, I can make any small changes that I need to to these document settings, such as going to the Document tab and changing the number of lines per page to 28, and setting one numbered header line to ensure that my header appears on line one. Once I've made these changes, I'll have two users, one called Ashley, one called WPTV, that are almost exactly the same. The only difference are those two changes that I made in the document format. Other than that, these two users use the same dictionaries, the same jobs and blocks folders, and since I use save settings to create WPTV, all of my other document and paragraph settings besides the two small changes that I made will be exactly the same as the ashley.ini settings. Save settings is an easy way to make new users that have small changes. 
This is great if you don't need to separate your work. However, if you do need to separate your work, if I do want my WPTV work to go into a different folder, I can make that change simply by going to Advanced, choosing the Jobs button, and creating a new folder for WPTV. And now when I create work in this user.ini file, the WPTV.ini, it will go into the WPTV folder. And if we look, I now have a WPTV folder with a WPTV file. Whether you wish to use save settings or create new user will often depend on why you need a new user to begin with. If you just need a new user with slightly different settings than your current user, save settings is probably what you want to do. However, if you want to create an entirely blank slate to work with, such as a place to store work from another reporter or user, create new user, maybe what you want to do instead. If you think you may have used the wrong methodology to create a user, you can always delete that user and recreate it, or you can use the available tools in the advanced pathing locations and or by importing settings to correct any mistakes that may have been made in the user creation process. Everything in Eclipse is customizable and using one method over the other sometimes amounts to simply saving more steps rather than getting better results. At the end of the day, we can always ensure that Eclipse will do what you want it to do in each of your users. And once you've created additional users, you can always switch users without closing Eclipse by hitting Load Settings and choosing an alternate user. And if you wish to delete users, you want to make sure that you're in a user INI file that you do not wish to delete. So right now I'm in the ashley.ini file and I'm going to delete the two INI files that we just created. I'm going to go to my file manager and I'm going to choose the main folder. This is where all the INI files are stored. Here I see my ashley.ini file, I see my janedoe.ini file, and if I scroll down, I see my wptv.ini file. I'm going to check wptv and Jane Doe, and from the file manager I'm going to just choose delete. I'll confirm the deletion, and now both of those users have been deleted, and the only INI file that I have left is just Ashley. If I close out of the file manager, return to my user settings, and choose load settings, you see that now I have only ashley.ini like I did when we started. However, the folders and files that I created in the users that I just deleted remain intact. This helps ensure that nothing is ever accidentally deleted. If I go to Documents, Eclipse, you see that I still have a Jane Doe folder with all of the associated files, and you see that I have a WPTV folder, and within that is still the file that I created within that user, even though I've now deleted the user. So you can be sure that even if you no longer need to have a user in your user list, in your Load Settings button, or when you enter Eclipse, you can safely delete that user and know that all of the work you created with that Eclipse user is safe. And you can back up and delete this work at your leisure. Understanding users can be confusing, but the most important thing to remember is that no matter what you need an Eclipse user to do, it can do that. And if it is not currently doing what you need it to do, the solution is usually very simple, and we can import or export settings from other users, or simply go to your advanced file pathing and change the pathing for the affected user. Keep in mind when you do use multiple users, that any changes you make to your settings will only apply to the user that you have open at that time. And if you've used the Create New User feature to create your users, and they do not use the same dictionaries, that's important to keep in mind when globaling. That's why it's a good idea to ensure that each user is using the appropriate dictionary, or that each user is using the same dictionary if that's the behavior that you want. If you have questions about creating users or user management, please don't hesitate to contact us. Advantage Software offers anytime support 24-7. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays, at 772-288-3266.
Email support is additionally available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day!